The Great Gildersleeve. A special rebroadcast for all you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations. Listen to another amazing episode in the life of the great Gildersleeve. Now let's join the great Gildersleeve. How goes it with our hero at the end of a long, hot summer? Well, we find him sitting in his shirt sleeves on the front porch of his home in Summerfield, quietly perspiring. He's alone with Bertie on her vacation, his nephew Leroy at camp, his niece Marjorie visiting friends. And so having eaten an inadequate supper prepared by himself and feeling the need for human companionship, he sees his old friend Judge Hooker going by and calls out to him. Hi, Judge. Where are you going? Hi, Gildy. Now, is it hot enough for you? Here. Sit down, Judge. Take a chair. Have a cigar. No, thanks, Gildy. I've got to be running along. Oh, you haven't got to be anywhere. I'm sorry. I have an engagement with a lady. Oh, Horace, listen. Stick around, will you? Tell me what I'll do. I'll play cribbage with you. And you know how I hate to play cribbage. Yeah, I know. Fortunately, I'm going to call on a lady who enjoys playing cribbage. Ta-ta. Oh, Horace, wait a minute. What is it? I'm late now. How would it be if I went along with you? Oh, no, you don't. You spend your evening and I'll spend mine. But never the twain shall meet. <laughs> Bye, Gildy. <laughs> All right, you old goat. You'll be sorry. <laughs> I might call Pettibone. <sighs> what a town. Try to stir up a little sociability and you get no place. People are just obstinate. If I was trying to spend a quiet evening by myself, they'd beat down my door. Just let me try to... Oh, hello, Dr. Pettibone. Gildersleeve, how have you been? Say, Doc, how about coming over for a little while? Maybe we could play some two-handed poker or something. Oh, uh, dear... Well, can't you tell her that I'm sick? <laughs> oh, well, I see. Well, some other time then. So long, Doc. Yeah, the old coot. I give up. I guess I'll just have to read my book. Well, where is it? I had it here. Who took my... Oh, here it is. Of course, somebody had to lose my place. <laughs> yeah... Petty bones just like all the rest. She's got him tied to her apron strings. Why, George, you'll never catch me with an apron string. A year ago, maybe. Two years ago. But not now. I've learned my lesson. Yes, sir. Old Doc, he has to sit there. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. All evening long, in one ear and out the other. <laughs> no, sir, not for me. Not for yours truly. I have the whole place to myself here. Ah, uh, I can sit down, be comfortable, quiet, spend the evening with a good book. One more evening with a good book and I'll go nuts! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have done that. Well, why not? It's my house, isn't it? I live here, don't I? I can throw things if I want. Never did like that picture anyway. <laughs> oh, doorbell. Who could that be? Well, go and see. Hey, never mind, I'll ask. Yes, what am I saying? Coming, be right there. Don't go away. <laughs> Leela. <laughs> hello, Strasmore. Well, I'll be. Well, hello. I mean, come in. <laughs> Oh, I don't think I'd better, Strathmorton. I saw you lie down, and I said to myself, I'll just run over and say hello to Strathmorton and tell him I'm back. Well, I'm glad you did. Come on in. You're letting in the mosquitoes. Oh, <laughs> well, just from then. Come on in the living room. I've got a fan going there. Well, you have a nice summer? Oh, I've had a wonderful time. What about you? Oh, so-and-so. Have you uh, seen Miss Goodwin lately? No. I haven't seen her all summer. Oh. She hasn't seen me either. That's all over. The mm. whole thing was a mistake, Leela. We found that out. I was sure you would, eventually. We're still good friends, naturally. Naturally? 
I suppose you've fallen in love with a dozen different girls since I've been away? Nope. Been too hot. <laughs> all I've done, Leela, is sit here in front of the fan all by myself, night after night. You poor boy. That's why I'm so glad you're back. You really are glad. You're not just saying that. Gosh, I'd be glad to see anybody. <laughs> you do pay a girl the prettiest compliment. Uh, I didn't mean it that way, Leela. But gosh, I've been all alone here these last two weeks. Nobody to talk to. Nobody to cook any meals for me. Poor child. I've been lonesome. Mm, I know just how you feel, because I've been lonesome, too. You? Well, I thought you were off there having a good time. Oh, I did. A wonderful time. Just party after party and such attractive men. There was an officer's training camp right nearby. Well, you can imagine. I must have had a hundred proposals if I had one. But I don't know. Somehow I wanted to get back. Silly of me, wasn't it? I don't know. Oh, I guess it's just that there are some things that mean more to me than parties and dancing. Yeah, me too. I haven't had a square meal in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frogmorton, you haven't changed a bit. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go out in the kitchen and cook you up a little snack right now. Would you like that? Well, sure, only... Oh, we'll have a little party, just the two of us. A party celebrating my return. Great. <laughs> <laughs> now, you just sit here and be comfortable, and I'll go out and... Uh, Leela. Yes? Uh, maybe you better not go out there. The kitchen, I mean. It sort of got away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Might find a few dirty dishes stacked up. Oh, now, don't you worry about the dishes, Throckmorton. This is a woman's work. Well, that's what I've always said. <laughs> Say, you weren't thinking of doing them. I don't know why not. Just because I go to gay parties and have all these proposals from behind some offices and all, I can be practical, too. Uh, Leela. You know, you need someone to take care of you, Throckmorton. You really do. Hmm? Oh, I declare you're as helpless as a child. Now, you just enjoy yourself while uh, I... Uh, Leela. Yes? There's something I feel I ought to say to you. Yes, Throckmorton. Uh, I've done quite a lot of thinking these last two weeks while I've been alone here. There hasn't been anything else to do. Mm, I've been thinking, too, Throckmorton. I've done a lot of thinking, and I've come to a conclusion, Leela. Yes? I've decided that I'm the type of man who ought never to marry. Well, really, I... I think it's only fair to tell you this. I've decided that women are not for me. Well, that's a coincidence, because I've just decided the same thing about men. Really? Well, that's fine, then we both... Particularly you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Uh, wait, Leela, you're not mad, are you? <laughs> Gracious, why should I be married? Well, then, why are you going? After all, I only ran over to say hello. I know, but... Now that I've said it, I'll say goodbye. Yeah. Leela, don't go. Don't leave me alone here. What about the dishes? I mean about our party. One of the officers was a colonel. Yeah. <laughs> what did I do? What did I say? I give up. Now what? Nothing to do, I guess, but go to bed. Just the same, I was right about women. Life is too short. I don't know why women can't be more like men. Oh, well, forget it. Oh, brother, look at that bed. Well, there's no use making it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sooner I'm in it, the sooner I'll forget it. No pajamas. You'd think a man could at least have some pajamas. Oh, well, don't mind me. I'm nobody. I just pay the bills around here, that's all. <sighs> Bed. <sighs> Why did I ever leave it? What did I ever get up for? <clears throat> Darn sticky weather. <clears throat> that's better. Now the other one. <laughs> Gosh, I ought to have these pants pressed. All right, so I ought to have them pressed. I can't do everything, can I? Oh, shut up and go to bed, Gildersleeve. Turn out the light and go to sleep. <sighs> bed. <laughs> Forgot to brush my teeth. 
<laughs> oh, well, who'll know? <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, tomorrow the children will be home, so I'd be glad. Little Marjorie, so sweet, so understanding. Little Leroy, bless them both. What's a home without children? Just an empty house. No childish voices to welcome you home at night. No patter of little feet. <sighs> I must try to be a better uncle to him. I must be more patient. More patient. I must try to spend more time with him. More time. I try to remember when I was a child. At winter, I get up at night and dress by yellow candlelight. In summer, quite the other way, I have to go to bed by day. Uh, I, uh, I have to go to bed and see the birds still hopping on the tree. Ooh, birds still hopping on the tree. Birds still hopping. Birds. <laughs> again in just a few Coming, Bertie, I'm coming. Yes. All right. 
Bertie, am I glad to see you. Come in. Let me have your suitcase. Well, thank you, Mr. Gilsey. Yeah, take off your hat and stay a while. By George, I don't know which I w- missed the worst. You or the children. Hey, is the children home yet? No, but they're coming today. Happy little family all together again. Yes, sir, that's nice. I do declare I missed you too, Mr. Gilsey. Yes, sir, I'm sure glad to be back. I'm going to get my apron on and fix you a real breakfast. Ah, uh, good old Bertie. Yes, sir. Sure is nice to be home again. Oh, my goodness sake. Oh, what's the matter in here? Hey, what's the matter, Bertie? Mr. Gilsey, I'm in dirty dishes. Hey, oh, I'm sorry, Bertie. Uh, I was going to wash him today. You were? I am. <laughs> I- I'll wash him, Bertie. I- I'll do anything for a square meal. Huh? I've been too weak to wash dishes. Mm-hmm. I've been undernourished, Bertie. I'm suffering from malnutrition. <laughs> you sure don't short, Mr. Gilsey. Yeah. Rickets. Rickets, yeah. How'd you like some orange juice and some scrambled eggs and crisp bacon and some toast and coffee? Oh, I'd love it, Bertie. But I'm afraid to look in the icebox. No oranges. No eggs. No bacon. <laughs> It's nothing to laugh at, Bertie. The ice box is as empty as Mother Hubbard's cupboard. Oh, I knew it would be, Mr. Gillespie. What you think I got in this big sack here? Ooh, Bertie. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Mr. Gillespie. Is it hot enough for you this morning? Oh, yes, Petey, it certainly is. But I don't care. All right, care for a glass of ginger ale? Yes, I would. With plenty of ice. You'll have to rush it, though, Petey. I've got to meet the noon bus on the corner. Oh, you can see it from the window. Uh, Leroy coming on? Yep. Just think, Petey, the first time a little fellow's been away. Two whole weeks. I'll bet he's been homesick. <laughs> Leroy? Oh, yeah, but it'll do him good. These camps are a fine thing for boys, Petey. Yeah, I suppose so. Here's your ginger ale. Thanks. What do you mean, you suppose so? Why, a good camp gives a boy wonderful training. It teaches him how to live in the woods. Well, I guess that's useful if a boy's training to live in the woods. <laughs> that's got nothing to do with it, Peavy. The idea is to make the boys healthy, self-reliant, all that stuff. Well, here comes the bus. How much do I owe you? Uh, that'll be ten. I'll pay you later. The bus will stop. Oh, there he is now. Leroy! Oh, Leroy! Hi, uh, by George, he's a great kid. <laughs> well, he certainly got himself a sunburn. My goodness, that's a terrible burn. Why, that's Leroy. What's the matter with your face? Poison oak. If you think my face is bad, you ought to see my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible, my boy. Is it painful? No, it just itches. But what the heck? Those are the brakes, kid. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you come right into Peavy's and get some calum and lotion on your face. I don't need it, Uncle. The camp doctor said so. Never mind that. Come on in here and get yourself fixed up. Welcome home. Hi, Doc. Glad to see you. Uh, <laughs> that's what the kids at camp call a drug of stock. Yeah, I see. Looks to me like you've got a bad case of poison oak, Leroy. Well, those are the brakes, kid. <laughs> a bottle of calum lotion, Mr. Gelderson. If you please, Petey. Well, Leroy, I suppose you're hungry, aren't you? Oh, boy, am I. No grubs since six o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, yes, grub. <laughs> Well, let's go home, huh? Bertie's got a nice lunch for you. Lead me to it. Here you are, Mr. Jonas, please. You justify it liberally to the affected part. That'll be 55, ca- er, 65 with the ginger ale. Oh, yes, yes, here. Goodbye, P.B. Goodbye, Mr. Jonas, please. Goodbye, Leroy. So long, Doc. <laughs> was a cheater and a louse and everything. Uh, shoot the actual grease, will you, Uncle? What are you talking about? Actual grease is butter, ketchup. Uh, you might as well pass the blood at the same time. The blood? Well, that's what we call ketchup at camp, blood. Leroy, you're not at camp any longer. Kindly remember that. Okay. Hey, Bertie, bring me another glass of cow. <laughs> well, how does it seem to get home, my boy? Doesn't seem like the old place has changed much. No, I guess it has. But aren't you a little bit uh, glad to be back? Yeah, sure, it's okay. Say, I better be getting over to Piggy. She's probably expecting me. But Leroy, aren't you going to wait and say hello to Marjorie? She ought to be here very soon. But Pig is expecting me right this minute. Pig doesn't even know you're home. Well, how's he going to find out if I don't go over and tell him? I'll see Marge when I get back. Leroy. Oh, uh. I think it would be nice, young man, if you waited and said hello to your sister. 
You like your sister, don't you? I don't know. Will you say hello to her anyway? Well, Uncle, hope you're satisfied. The whole afternoon's a total loss. It was just about ready, Mr. Gilfrey. When do you think Miss Marge will be here? I don't know. Ye gods, don't everybody keep asking me when she's going to get here. I don't know. She was supposed to be here by 2 o'clock. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilfrey. I was only asking. I'm sorry, Bertie. I shouldn't talk like that. It's just... Well, I'm darn glad to see you all. I got upset, I guess. Come on, Leroy. Cheer up. I don't know what Piggy's going to think. Piggy will be just as glad to see you tomorrow. Can I call him up? No. Why not? Because if you call him up, he'll come over. I think it'd be nice if we had the first evening to ourselves. Just the family. You think I was a prisoner here or something? Gosh, at camp, they let you do anything you want to. Well, you're not at camp. You're telling me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leroy. <laughs> we mustn't get into an argument, my boy. After all, we haven't seen each other for two weeks. Let's be pals, shall we, huh? Here she comes, Mr. Gill, please. What? There's a car pulling up in the front. Oh, it's her, all right. It's Marjorie. Let's all go and meet her. Come on, Leroy, get her back. I'll get her. Hi, George. It's good to have you home, my dear. Open the door, will you, Bertie? I expect you must be hungry, Miss Marjorie. I'll have dinner ready and two cakes. Oh, that's wonderful, Bertie. Leroy just got back this morning. Well, Leroy, aren't you going to say hello to your sister? Hi. Leroy, <laughs> for heaven's sake, what have you got all over you? Leprosy. How about a kiss? <laughs> no. No, Leroy, don't touch me. Yeah, now, now, my dear. It's only poison oak. Leroy, behave yourself. I see the camp hasn't improved his manners any. How do you like that? I wait here all afternoon for her, and that's the kind of reception I get. Well, you asked for it. Young man, are you ready for dinner? I'll say. Yeah, let me see your hands. <laughs> it's on account of the poison oak, huh? The doctor at camp said not to get any water on it. He said water is very bad. If you're very careful, you can at least scrub your nails. Go and do so. But us, the doctor... I don't care what the doctor said. I'll take full responsibility. Okay. But don't blame me if I get infected. <laughs> well, my dear, did you have a good time? Oh, Uncle Mort, it was wonderful. You should see the Benson's house. It's just beautiful. I always thought their house here in Summerfield was a little pretentious. Oh, their new house is much nicer than that. Much. And they have two maids. We have a maid. But they have an upstairs maid and a downstairs maid. Mm. And in the morning, you can have breakfast in bed if you want to. I'm opposed to breakfast in bed. It encourages laziness. Oh, you'd love it. You know you would. We had breakfast in bed every morning, Barbie and I. We had more fun. All we did was laugh together. Uncle Phil called us the Giggly Twins. Uncle Phil? Mr. Benson. He asked me to call him Uncle Phil. He did, eh? And he took us out to dinner several times at the country club. Country club. And Barbie and I went to the most wonderful dance there. I don't know. The boys there aren't like the Summerfield boys. They seem more grown up. Uh, what's the matter with the Summerfield boys? I think they're a pretty manly lot myself. Oh, Uncle Mort, really? You'd ever seen any others. Y if I'd ever seen them. But anyway, we had more fun. One day we were... Well, that's fine. That's fine, my dear. But aren't you really kind of glad to get home? Well, I'm glad to see you again, naturally. And Bertie. And Leroy, I guess. Well, I certainly missed you, my dear. Hasn't seemed like home here without you. I can tell you that. You know, I've been thinking, Uncle Mort. Couldn't we sort of fix this place up a little? What's the matter with this place? I had it painted just last year. I know, but it looks just the way it did before it was painted. Yeah. And the furniture. The couch is practically brand new. But it's just like the old one. Well, this is no time to be buying furniture. There's a war on. Besides, I don't see anything wrong with it. I like it. Anything else you'd like to see changed around here? Well, since you bring it up... Um, Unky, darling, do you have to go around in suspenders? Can you suggest a better way to hold up my pants? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's not that, but uh, couldn't you wear a jacket? Ja in this weather? Well, at least to dinner. Yeah, yes, I suppose so. And Leroy. We've got to do something about Leroy. His manners, really. I'd be embarrassed to have the Bensons meet him. Well, he could be a little smoother. <laughs> Leroy, suppose you go upstairs and put on a necktie. Necktie? Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. <laughs> you see me putting on my jacket, do you not? What is this? We are trying, my boy, to show your sister that we're not cannibals here. We'd like her to believe that we know how to behave just as well as the Benson. Yes, Jeffrey? Yes, Bertie? The graph is on. Come and 
get it. Oh. <laughs> Shall we go to in to dinner, my dear? <laughs> You may clear the table, Bertie. We're finished. Leroy, where are you going? I thought I'd just run over to Piggy's for a minute and say hello. You're not going to Piggy's, and that's final. Okay. What do you say we go to the movie? Sister, you've got a deal. How about it, now? Well, I thought it'd be nice if we just spent the evening here. Doing what? Well, just having fun, enjoying one another. After all, this is the first time we've been together for two weeks. You want us to just sit here? No, we don't have to just sit. We can, we can play games. We went to the movies all the time at the bench. You don't have to go tonight. I know. Why don't Marge and I go up and you can stay home if you're tired? I'm not tired. I'm just sick and tired of hearing about the Bensons, that's all. The Bensons happen to be very nice people. I don't doubt it. I just don't want to hear about them, that's all. Very well. I don't know what kind of ideas have been putting in your head, but by George, where are you going, young lady? Well, I'm certainly not going to sit here and listen to remarks about my friends. Now, just a minute. If you have any form of entertainment to propose, kindly let me know. Otherwise, I'm going out. Oh, no, you're not. I'll tell you where you're going. You're going to bed. Now, Uncle Mort, let's not be ridiculous. I'm not a child, you know. You heard me. You're going to bed. Right after dinner? Right this minute. Close to the brakes, kid. <laughs> <laughs> what about Leroy? Never mind about Leroy. You go right up those stairs just as fast as you can. That's telling her, Uncle. You can't do this to me. Oh, can I? That's telling her. Quiet! <laughs> you can't treat me like a child. You can't. You can't. Oh! And go to bed. You too, Leroy. Me? You heard me. Go to bed. Oh, Uncle, what did I do? On your way. Get started. Oh, gee, I don't see why I have to go to bed. See, we can't have a little discipline and obedience around here. I don't see why I have to pay for these kids. I've got no friends. <laughs> yeah. By George, it's great to have him home again. <laughs> gentlemen, it's nice to be back on the air again. I hope you've enjoyed the program, and I hope you'll all be listening again next week. And uh, tell your friends. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Forces Radio Service.